and God alone be the glory. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we truly thank you and praise you, Father God, for this being the day that you made, God. We pray, God, that in the gathering of your people from the north, the south, the east, and the west, God, in the comforts of this virtual setting, God, that you, God, and you alone, God, will enter in, God, to their space, that you will occupy, oh God, a, 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 a portion of the space that, 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 that they may feel your presence, oh God, that, Father God, as the word goes forth, they may bear witness in their spirit that you're speaking directly to them concerning the issue of their life. And God, if it's plural, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that they have an attentive ear to hear all of what the spirit of the Lord may be saying in this moment. Blessed by your spirit, God, every word that proceeds out of my mouth, that it may be edifying, that it may build up the body of Christ, that it may encourage them for the journey called life. And more importantly, God, that it may glorify you who sitteth high, God, and looks low. God, bless your creation in this word as it goes forth, that you may be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Uh, I'm grateful that um, you guys are as patient with a newcomer as you have been so far today. And I ask your continued patience as I navigate this, this new space um, in the house of God called Bethel, located in Fontana, Fontana California. Um, it is... It is a lot, amen, to try to put into words all of what is in my heart. Um, but I will do my very best to share um, what God has planted there. Um, to presiding elder, Reverend Alan Williams and your lovely wife, um, to my good thing, who you guys got to meet today, the love of my life, Jennifer Sims and our son, Jacob. Uh, to the clergy, officers, members, friends of Bethel AME Church here in Fontana, I greet you with extreme joy and excitement in my heart. The kind that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. Why, you might ask, uh, is his joy and excitement so extreme? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. You see, it overwhelms the human organism, to see God. The manifestation of God's word is like fire. The prophet Ezekiel says, shut up in my bones. But they'll, I've already been praying for you. Uh, and what God is doing in this season of our existence, I hope that you are praying for me too. I want to briefly share with you from the scriptures that were read out of 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, uh, beginning at uh, the, the, the 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, beginning at the ninth verse and the 12th verse. Um, it was read out of the New Standard Version, and I'll read it again for your hearing. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. Those things God has built to us through the spirit, for the spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being huh, knows what is truly human, except the human spirit, that is, then so also no one comprehends what is truly God's, except God, except the spirit of God. Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. Amen. So that we may understand the gifts, so that we may 
comprehend, uh, not with our own understanding, but that we may see what only can be revealed. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to speak briefly from the subject. Um, note it, uh, and we'll we'll talk about it more, I'm sure, in the coming weeks and next thought. Amen. The two words, I thought. Hallelujah. I thought. Um, as a little black boy um, growing up in Birmingham, Alabama, in the mid-70s, uh, we did not have that much. Um, but we were blessed from what I could tell. Um, being you know, a young kid, for, for many, many years, my dad walked to work, but at least he had a job. My sister and I had enough to have hope, and hope became enough to encourage us to dream. Hear what I'm saying to you. No matter what grandmother's house I was at, I was at a church on Sunday mornings. While I attended Father Baptist Church, and when it's staying with my father's mother, um, I've only been an AME. Uh, because, and when I stayed with my mother, the, the little white church that was only a block around the corner was the one I, I stayed in, grew up in, one that I had membership in. So I've been in AME, amen, all my life. I, I can claim it and it'd be true. Um, I may have fellowship with a host of those in other religious tra traditions, but my home is where you find me here today. Uh, faith in God and the presence of love in our lives in was to imagine the possibilities. It, it enabled us to dream. Uh, uh, faith in God and the presence of love. I recall riding home from my aunt's house uh, after seeing my mother's mom the night before she passed away. I remember being told, you guys may know, what, what, back in the day, we used to have a living room before we had dens and family rooms and black households. It was called the front room or the living room. I was told to stay in the living room or the front room. And I didn't do as kids oftentimes do. I did like I wanted to do instead of what I was told to do. And I peeked in the bedroom and saw all what death looked like on my grandmother's face. And I thought, hallelujah, on the drive home, I don't ever want to die. I want to live forever. I remember being bussed from a black my black neighborhood uh, and, and to schools clear across town, white schools on the other side of town. And I thought, uh, I want to be somebody. I want to be a, a fireman, a, a police officer, or the first Black president. I thought I could be somebody. I remember when I was in the sixth grade, and, and I told my best friend at the time, I'm going to marry Jennifer Grant. She didn't know me at that time, but we met as juniors in rival high schools. And as our, our friends' circles drew closer together, uh, she tried to even play matchmaker and introduce me to somebody else. Hallelujah. But I thought she doesn't even know what God has said regarding her becoming my wife. Uh, we've been together for 35 of 50 years, and we've been married for 29 of those. You see, our I thoughts are possibilities that when aligned with the will of God become probabilities. My, my. I've witnessed possible becoming probable uh, from a question like, is this possible, Mark, to a statement like, this is probable, period. Uh, the Spirit of God reveals the truth. At eight or nine, the thought of living forever was a childhood dream, a, a faintest cry from my heart. But God answered when I was 28 years old, situated in my own house, in my then den, because the, the front rooms and the living rooms had been upgraded to dens and family rooms. I was sitting in my own home when, what, with the TV on, and I could clearly hear the Spirit of God assure me you shall not die, but live with me forever. And he took me immediately back to those childhood moments when I was in that back seat behind my dad as he drove us home, looking up at the heavens and saying, I don't ever want to die. You, you, you shall not die, God said, but live. God says in Isaiah 55 that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. They are heavenly and he encourages us humans 
to, to lean not into our own understanding. When, when I became a man, I began, began to realize that he made me a fireman, uh, a police officer, and yes, the first black president, but I'm gonna have to explain that when I'm quite sure. Amen. <laughs> Only not the way I thought. Amen. He, he didn't do it the way I thought. Um, as a fireman, uh, uh, he said, uh, I put out fires. Uh, I, I, I put out things out of the, to the spiritual health of his creation. He's called me to be a fireman, to extinguish problems. Hallelujah. He says, I'm a police officer. He says, I, I, he's empowered me to enforce, maintain, and, and, and yes, uh, uh, it, it, it encourage heaven's standards here in the earth. Uh, being ethical, being a, a man of integrity, being uh, just when there's all kinds of injustice all around us, and to encourage equality. Yes, there's no male nor female, no bond nor free, no nor Jew. We're all God's creation, born of his spirit and washed in the same blood, purged and purified for his glory. We are not to make the distinctions in and the delineations among his creation that we make. So he calls me to be an enforcer as a police officer. And then finally, God bore witness to my spirit that yes, I am also a first black president, just not Barack Obama. Uh, you see, I lead as a black man in white man's America, predominantly white companies, places Come I on. shouldn't have been, but God opened doors that no man could shut. And Come in the midst of all of that in, in 2007, God took little old me, put me in charge of a, a company out here in California and translated me from there to here for a time such as this, because as we can be somebody when we open up our hearts and allow the faith that we have in them and the love that is shed abroad in our hearts to create possibilities we can imagine when we lean not to our own understanding. Hallelujah. We can allow what God desires to become manifest. You see, Bethel, I, I didn't put myself in this position. Uh, if you were to ask your presiding elder or even ask the bishop, God planted within the heart of man what he desired for you. I sought nothing and I don't today. I desire only to please him in the newness of the life he's blessed me to live. There was a time when I don't, didn't know what I now know about the truth, that God is a spirit. He's not one of us. God created us to be like himself, not desiring us, not desiring that we should not desire that God be like us, but that we, we should desire to be more like God. Mm. In our text, we find the revelation of Paul regarding the mystery of God. Paul says everything about God is a mystery. You can't just hear and learn about God from a book. You can't learn and know God from a conversation. You can't really even come to know God from a meeting like the one we're in now called church. To know God requires something much bigger. Uh, you see, he's notorious. Uh, he, he's mysterious. I don't use these words interchangeably just to make a point. God's notorious for being incomprehensible, meaning our minds cannot fathom and understand or comprehend the bigness with which God actually is. You see, he's notorious and he's big. He's truly the original notorious B.I.G., but he's no big as small. He's all that and everything else because God is a spirit. That says that, uh, that, that, that the only the spirit of God can reveal the truths and divine thoughts of God. God's spirit is the only one that can give us understanding of what God thinks and desires and feels. And don't think God doesn't have thoughts, desires, and feelings. God is, has wrath. God is full of love. God made us like him. Jesus himself further affirms Paul's revelation quoted in the text when he, he asks Peter, whom do they say that I am? And then he asks Peter, turn around, I'm paraphrasing. He said to Peter, whom do ye say that I am? You're the Christ, the son of the living God. Flesh and blood, he said to Peter, did not reveal that. This rock, hallelujah, I will establish my church. 
I thought, I thought the mysterious being that created the heaven and the earth called me by name at 17 years old. And I thought, who, me? And I took on in the opposite direction. I wasn't trying to have what God desired for me. I thought I knew better. I thought, hallelujah. Thought. I thought. And, and, and I ran for 12 years from my call because I did not want what God wanted. What I thought was in conflict with what God desired. I am with you in this consecrated space, which is declared a holy place and is affirmed by its very own name, Bethel, meaning house of God. And I'm encouraging you that what God is doing in this season bigger than any man, hallelujah. It's bigger than you, bigger than me. And we need to lean into that and put our faith and hope in a God cannot fail to take us places we cannot go without. It. He desires to take us. We have not seen, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has entered into the heart of mankind the things that God desires to do for those that love him. If you don't believe me, you can find it for yourself in Zechariah 4 and 6. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 28 that everything that we in, endure in this life works together for the glory of God, but only for those that love God. Amen. God is bringing us together for a time such as this, for work we know not of, and all we got to do is lean in and trust it. I want to encourage you, Bethel, that I, I, that, that I know it's hard to lose a pastor you've had for some time. It may, but though your heart may be prepared, but you, you knew that of the possibilities and that there was a strong probability because what God did with, with then Reverend Francine Brookings, pastor of Bethel AME Church in Miami, who he, God knew that he was going to turn her into the right Reverend Francine Brookings, the 141st elected and consecrated bishop of the AME Church. So if God knew that already, he also knew about me. And what he was doing was planting me in the hearts of the leadership of this church because he was concerned about you. And he had to bring me all the way from Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> uh, and, and, and me in a position to say yes when I was asked, will I serve you? So I said yes to God. I've said yes to the bishop, I've said yes to the presiding elder, and now I'm saying yes to you, the members, the family, the friends of Bethel. I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve God in the spirit of holiness. I'm here to serve God as, as Paul said, through the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and I wanna encourage you that when God, when God begins a good work, hallelujah, He's a faithful and just God to finish the work he's begun. This is just the beginning. And as presiding elders said, it is upon the shoulders of those that have come before us. Let us be good stewards of that which has been passed unto us, that God may be glorified and that we can tell men, women, boys, and girls, that we can tell our children and our children's children's children what God has done. Hallelujah to God be the glory. That is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I thought, keep on thinking, keep on reconciling when you think you need to pray, when you when you have your own uh, uh, your own moments where you're, you're thinking this and you're wondering that, is he going to be tall? Is he going to be short? Is he a man? Is it going to be a woman? Will he have a family? Will he have children? Will the children be young? Will the children be old? Will he be a professional? Will he be a full time? All those thoughts bring them into captivity. So they're subject to Christ. So that God can give a peace that surpasses our understanding and we can get out of our Father's business all for his glory. Be Bethel. I can't wait to meet everybody face to face. That's the word of God for you, for me, and for all those that would receive it. To I God be know. the glory. And amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to you, God. There may be someone here right now. Amen that uh, is struggling. I'm gonna say a special prayer for the those that are on the, the, the I don't, I hate to say shut in, but those that are suffering and in need of some 
touched by God, whether it be a physical healing, a healing of the mind, a, 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 and a word of encouragement. I want to close with a prayer at the time that we do the benediction tomorrow. This appeal is for those that may know with certainty that if, if you were to that you would hear God say the same to you. I've prepared a place for you and you're gonna live with me forever. If you don't know what that with a certainty in your heart, if you don't know that with a blessed assurance, then I ask you, please say yes to God. Give us a call to the church at 909-350-9401. You can email us at Bethel.Fontana at att.net. You can put it in the chat right now. The ministers can log it. We can follow up with you. But not to allow this moment to escape us. If that's you, just for a moment, if you would close your eyes, everyone, all hearts composed. And for those that desire a closer walk with God, repeat these words after me. Lord God, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart and save me. If you simply fixed your heart to say those words, God will meet you where you are. Wrap his arms around you, embrace you, and begin to walk through life with you. The Bible says that he will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. And those that come to him must believe that he is. What you just said, you said in faith. There's no form or fashion. There's no script. God says, fix your heart and come to me, those that are heavy laden. Take up my yoke, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Welcome to the family of God if you utter those words or anything close to it. We receive you and God accepts you. Welcome. Amen.